Hi everybody. This short video will be talking uh, specifically about Mendelian genetics, which uh, I see as the solution to some of the difficulties Darwin uh, had in terms of how showing how um, new species would develop and how changes uh, in um, types of organisms that we see take place. This was a big difficulty that Darwin had. And so we focus on this guy named Mendel, a little-known Australian, uh, Austrian monk who um, basically spent a lot of time with peas. And what he did with these peas, um, what he's most famous for, is he um, uh, mixed them together through uh, experiments, um, working with um, mostly seed, the color of the seeds, and the texture, whether they were wrinkled or smooth. And what he did was he literally um, crossbred them uh, sort of to see what his results would be. So what he does is he he's picture him in a monastery uh, in the back of where he lives, and he's got thousands of pea plants. And what he does is he takes pea plants that are uh, with um, green peas, and he only breeds them with other ones with green peas, and he makes sure that it's only green, 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 and he keeps them separate, and he keeps them all in one area, and then he has another area where uh, they're all yellow peas, and he makes sure by breeding them together uh, that he only has yellow peas. So what we call these true breeding lines or pure breeding lines. So he's got only yellow over here and green. So he's got these two, the yellow and green, and then he can start playing with them essentially playing God. He's going to mix them together. He takes pollen and he mixes the pollen from one with the other and he gets um, uh, the results. Uh, and so what he essentially does is when he mixes only green peas and yellow peas, uh, what his result afterwards is all yellow. Okay, so if we were to look at the slide I have there, that you can see that the F1 generation, which is essentially the next generation, the first generation, the F1 generation, and the, the one above, which has the all green and the yellow, those are, that's the F0 generation. So when he has the F1 generation, everything is green. And this is remarkable because it shows that everything's always green when, and he loses, excuse me, everything's always yellow and he loses the green peas. And what's really interesting then is the F2 generation, when he crossbreeds again um, his uh, all yellow peas together, the green comes back. One quarter of the peas are green. This is a really interesting pattern that he's managing to make green peas disappear in the F1 and then come back in the F2 generation. So he has to describe this. He's, got to understand why it, it happened. So he argues that there's these particles that are inside. Now he didn't know the word genes. He hadn't come up with that or, or DNA. None of that he had developed. So all he has is this idea that there's some particles that, and that some particles are dominant and some particles are recessive. We now know those as recessive and dominant genes. In this case, the yellow is the gene, the the color yellow is dominant, and so therefore anytime it gets mixed with green, it and only green and yellow are there, uh, it will be yellow. However, for some reason, the recessive gene of green does come back in the second generation, the F2 generation. So how does this get described? Well, the, the way to understand this is you've got to look a little bit closer into um, cells and how cells work. Uh, particularly reproductive cells. Now, I'm not talking about mitosis. Mitosis uh, is just regular copying of cells where you have uh, the making of skin or hair and things like that. That's not this. Those are somatic cells. What I'm talking about is sex cells, and that is the meiosis uh, process, the meiotic process. And how this works is you have gametes. You have male, like think about sperm, and eggs, say on the female side, but you don't have to be explicitly male and female with plants. Um, um, and if they come together, you have uh, sexual reproduction. In other words, half of 
the particles of the genes are from the male and then half from the female are in that first cell. That first cell is called a zygote and, um, and then that continues to split in a regular somatic way through meiosis and then you have uh, eventually um, the growth of the plant or in our case uh, the birth of a baby after, after um, nine months. So now let's go back to um, thinking about uh, these peas or what's inside the peas, okay? And so that's when we have to think about um, what we call the alleles. So uh, the alleles are different. Uh, the alleles are different. You have um, the gene for color. Uh, and the gene for color, uh, there are two choices, remember, with the peas. They're the green and the yellow. Those are the alleles. Think of it as um, uh, perhaps a Nike shoes. Uh, and I've got Nike sneakers on, and you can see my Nike sneakers, uh, and they look really great. But actually, one of my sneakers is a, a, an awful old Converse, but you can't even see that. That's the recessive. Now, I could have on both of my feet actually have Nikes, or I could have uh, the old Converse on one foot, but you wouldn't even see it because the brand new Nikes um, the shoes uh, would uh, exhibit or express um, the, uh, as a phenotype uh, the fact that I had the two nice shoes on. That's what you have with these peas, that you have the outward looking appearance of the peas um, always looking yellow in the F1 generation, right? How, however, uh, not necessarily. Uh, it, that's that's not necessarily always the case, right? Um, because uh, within that, there could be uh, very likely there could be uh, a recessive green um, allele, but it's not being expressed. It's there genotypically because the genes are there as a big A, little A. Um, and the little a being the green, but the um, uh, the recessive isn't seen. The dominant yellow uh, allele is always visible. This is called heterozygosity, or it's heterozygous. If they're both, uh, the alleles are both the uh, big A, uh, or they're both yellow coming together when he was mixing them, uh, then that is a homozygous uh, yellow. So you can be, phenotypically, it could be yellow, uh, with both of the alleles inside of it uh, being uh, yellow, or it could be yellow with one of the alleles inside being green, but you don't see it. Get it? Okay, so we have then um, this, uh, these combinations of things that can happen. I could have um, something, I could still have a pea that's green, but it, the only way it can be green is if two greens get together because the greens are recessive. So on the slide where you see the F2 generation um, being shown, uh, only one of them, the, little, the one with the two little A's, expresses as green. All the other ones are going to be yellow. And notice it. It's, notice what it looks like. It's three to one. It's the same as that first thing I showed you when Mendel had uh, done his study. He didn't understand the idea of genes inside, but he did see that he was getting this 3 to 1 ratio, and that's what you see here, this 3 to 1 ratio. Uh, the first one is um, homozygous, big A, big A, that's just two yellows came together. Uh, the two middle ones are heterozygous, they're still yellow phenotypically, they still look yellow, and genotypically they're heterozygous, they're mixed inside, but you don't see the green. And then the last one is homozygous for green, and phenotypically it looks green, it's, out, it's phenotype, it's outward expression, it's face, pheno face is the way I see it, or think about it, uh, it is expressed. And that's really important. Those ratios are really important. You, you, the ratio of phenotypes is 3 to 1, and the ratio of the genotypes is 1 with homozygous with two, two yellows, 2 heterozygous, which is a combination of the two, and then 1 with two small A's or, or green. And so that's a 1 to 1 ratio on genotypes, but a 3 to 1 ratio of phenotypes. 
There's another way you can do it, and then I have there, and that's what's called the Punnett Square Method. I can actually literally put the parents on either side of the box, and on, oop, it would be like this for you. On either side of the box, I could put the parents. Okay, if you look at that slide with the Punnett Square, or you look in the book on the Punnett Square, you can see that the parents are on the outside. And so I've split up um, the, uh, what you do is you split up the two alleles from the parents. And then you fill, simply fill in the box, and it gives you all the different combinations. I used to like doing the Punnett Square um, when I learned this method, because it was very simple. I would just literally put the Punnett Square on the, on the paper, and then I would write who was um, mixing with who. You'll see you're going to need to use this Punnett square for your homework because you're going to be asked to do um, a question um, where you are determining uh, how many uh, pea plants uh, would result a given, um, uh, from a given amount of, of pea plants that you're studying. So when you do the homework, you'll see that. Okay. Um, that's about all. I'm going to share with you right now. Um, there is a great slide also uh, that I'll, I'll put up that you should look at, which shows uh, all the different combinations of things that Mendel looked at. He, he actually studied not only seed shape and color, uh, but he did samples of pod shape, pod color, color of the flower, and it always came up three to one ratio. If you look on the right hand side, look at those numbers. The more he did it, the closer it got to three. So he has a really good uh, result here from his study, okay? So we'll leave it at that, and I'll come back and give you another video on something else uh, later.